So when you instantiate a thread, the thread is in the new state. And then when you start a thread, you basically move the thread from the new state onto the runnable state. The runnable state is a state where the thread is waiting for the operating system scheduler to schedule it. Okay? And notice that the only way or the only next state from the runnable state is to the running state. And this happens when the operating system scheduler schedules the thread. Now the thread now is running. And what may happen here? While the thread is running, the thread may choose to yield, call thread.yield, in which case it will be preempted and put back onto the runnable state. Or its time slice may be up, in which case the operating system schedule will preempt the thread and put it back onto the runnable state. Or the thread itself may move from the running state into the seeking lock state by calling a synchronized method or entering a synchronized block in Java. When that happens, two things may happen. A call to a synchronized method or a synchronized block. The thread may acquire that lock, in which case it's going to go to the runnable state and then scheduled to the running state to execute the locked code. Or if, say, the lock is already held by another thread, then the seeking lock will move the thread from the running state onto the blocked state, okay? where the thread will be blocked on the monitor's waiting set, waiting to acquire the lock by seeking the lock again. So from the running state, the thread may then invoke wait or a timed wait explicitly. So if the thread invokes the wait, then it will go from the running to the waiting state. Okay? And while on the waiting state, the thread may be notified via notify or notify all, in which case it, it moves the thread back to the runnable state, or the thread may be interrupted, which moves the thread from the waiting state to the runnable state. Similar to the waiting state, there is the timed waiting. And timed waiting is when the thread explicitly calls a wait with the timeout parameter or join. And while on the timed wait, the timeout runs out, then the thread is moved from the timed wait back to the runnable state. Or, of course, you know, the thread may be signaled via notify or notify all, in which case it's moved back to the runnable state, or just like the, on the waiting state, while on the timed waiting state, the thread may be interrupted, in which case, again, it moves to the runnable state. Finally, that while the thread is running, its method that it's running may throw an exception, in which case the thread is terminated, or the thread's run method may n end normally in which case the thread is terminated. So terminated is a terminal state from which there is no recovery.